and he showed me the video and I'm like, man, is that you? And he said, yeah. And, and I'm like, I, that's just, you can't believe what the CBD and the hemp and the cannabis had done for someone like that. And, and it was just so amazing to me that just touched my heart so much. introduce yourself and talk a well, little about who you are and what you do and I'll try to keep it to the hour as well. Okay that'd be great. <laughs> well my name is Rich Turman and my company's All Nation Solutions uh, LLC so we've just working on hemp projects and um, I live in Oklahoma I lived here all my life and we've been working with a lot of Oklahoma farmers and a lot of tribal uh native uh where they're trying to grow hemp and do some different things so that's something to do so we we've started a process with uh, growing with some farmers and we grew about 720 acres in oklahoma uh then last year with the we had contracts to grow but again corona kind of put some of that finances in a place where they said we'll have to wait till this year so we're looking forward to this year uh, of growing hemp and then also part of that would be focusing on the fiber and the textile side. Um, what are your thoughts about the ban on hemp flour that's coming around? I saw an article that was out today that um, California is looking to ban smokable flour. I, I seen that, but about smoking. Um, and again, Texas had started that where they wouldn't allow the smokable, but it got overturned by, by some of the court. Um, I'm not a smoker, so I don't know myself on smoking. Uh, I know people could use it for medicinal purposes uh, and without the THC, it's going to help them and do better. But I, I think also in the general, the whole plant itself is is good for medicinal and for textile and for the things that we do uh, in our life. And it was God put it on this planet for years ago and man kind of took it away. And I think this is something that would definitely have uh, benefits in, in every way we look at it. And we look at, you know, back in the forties and thirties when they grew hemp uh, for the victory and uh, the different things of rope and the things that they made for uh, the cotton textiles that they made then. And the difference it made then was great. Now the technology of it and even knowing more about the cannabinoids and everything inside the system of the plant, there's a lot more things that we could do inside this plant to learn more about it even daily. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about, um, do you think that it'll have any effect on the fiber production? Like where do you really separate um, flour? I mean, it, it's just going to be the sale of the flour, but. Why? I, I believe fiber. most of, I think the law was looking at more the smokable on the flour. So the things that they was trying to say is not, not smokable, but the flour itself I don't think it'd be a problem. And, and uh, even like Massachusetts just come on uh, this with Tom Young and, and earlier just today. And he said that Massachusetts has really came on to accepting the flour and, and, and the hemp for smokable and the things that they hadn't for two years. So all of a sudden they, they let this come on and his company is going to start thriving and, and making and producing flour, smokable hemp. That's something he focused on is actually the flour in Massachusetts. Oklahoma is no problem. And just sometimes, you have to just say, okay, it's California. Some, sometimes there's different states that have different things to try to put regulations back on a product that is really shouldn't be restricted. So I, I don't know, understand why they do that. It's, it's really hard to uh, understand the, the, the political thing of, of the plant that God put this plant on, a, on the planet for a reason. It's medicinal. It could be used in many different ways. And I think the overall that the growth of the plant's going to grow more and more in the textile side and the plastic side and the different things that we have is going to be uh, I phenomenal. I, I really do. It's just going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. So what was your, when, how long have you been in this industry? What, what was your aha moment that hemp <laughs> is what we've been told it is? Well, I, uh, I met with a bunch of tribal natives in and uh, I'd done business with them and I, I had uh, cash registers and, and POS systems and merchant services. So I did businesses with them and I helped them get contracts or they'd need things. They just call me and I'm just kind of this 
all nation solutions. They call me for anything. So I kind of thought, oh, this would be great. I'd use this all nation solution. But I was in a meeting with them all. And there's a several tribal meeting uh, members there. And, and they said, Rich, we're thinking about getting into this, you know, cannabis. And they're, they're really going to get this. Uh, we want to really focus on it and get going. I'm like, okay, I'll get you the best price. Do you want it round? Do you want it square? And I was thinking canopy, you know. So I had this thought of canopy and, and nobody had ever called it cannabis in, in Oklahoma. And so we, uh, you know, they all snickered. And I, you know, that joke was on me. So I was checking myself and make sure I didn't have food on me. Or I'm like, okay, something's up. I got egg on me. They're all laughing. And, and, um, uh, I had a buddy there and he 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 was just dying laughing and, and hysterically laughing at me. And I was like, okay, I mean, maybe I could do this. I will, if you need bars in between, you need canopy, you need it between the can the casinos, this kind of thing. And and uh, he said, no, 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 Rich. He said, it's cannabis, it's marijuana. And I'm like, oh no, no, absolutely no. I don't want nothing to do with that, you know? And and uh, so they're like, no, no, it's not. It's not that it's in the same family. It's called hemp and, it, and it's cannabis and hemp. And I'm like, uh -uh, I don't want nothing to do with that. So I had that moment where they said, <laughs> Rich, you know, this is cannabis, this is hemp, but it's, it's different. And so they said, I want you to watch this video. And it was hemp for the victory. So I want you to go home and watch this video and I have an open mind about this. And, and this is what we want to talk about is this cannabis plant called hemp. And, and I'm like, oh boy. So I went home and I was very nervous and very much, uh, it was like my wife and uh, yeah. I said, honey, I want you to just kind of have an open mind and just listen to this. It's nothing we're going to do that we're going to, I just want to watch this video and see. And, and I, you know, I, I was real cautious about opening the video and watching it with her. And so we watched the video and, and it went, but just a little bit, she was like, oh, this is great. This is the kind of plant that God put on the planet where, you know, we need to do this. This is awesome. And and next thing I know, you know, and, and I, I was deacon of the church. And so, uh, you know, I was still just very cautious that I did stuff. And and uh, she was tagging me in Facebook on all this hemp stuff. And she's my best supporter. And she's like, oh, we can do this. This is great. And, and uh, uh, Travis from uh, Can Help. I met him and he's, he had some product actually uh, doing some uh, tinctures and different things. He said that he was on all kinds of different medications over his back and had, had surgeries on it and had just in pain all the time and opium. And he had over five patches on him all the time of opium. And he said, it just crazy. I just couldn't, I got very heavy and, and weight. Um, I couldn't do anything. I was almost lethargic and just really not feeling well at all time. And somebody said, look, I want you to try this cannabis and, and the hemp. And he tried it and, and eventually within a month, and now he's three years completely free of no drugs and he's taking a and the hemp. And to see somebody at, at heavy set and see how he was just immobile to able to run a store and he runs a can't help um, a tenature store that, that sells CBD. And uh, I seen him and then also he, as he was opening that store, I happened to be there and just learning. I was just absorbing all this stuff about CBD and, and him. And uh, I've probably YouTube wore it out because it's just any video, anything says hemp. I'm like, okay, I want to know, I want to know about this product because to me, it's a great product. And this is a, uh, for me, that was the Baja moment that we just, okay, everything in there. So as Travis was there, he interviewed uh, and, and Newsline 9 is one of our news stations here, come in and interviewed this young lady right there in his grand opening. And she said that she had seizures for forever, all of her life. And she had sometimes, you know, multiple seizures a day. And she now is 16. And by the CBD help, she was able to control it enough where she could get her driver's license. And I, I interviewed, and I was sitting at that interview and I was like, this is awesome. You know, thank you, Lord. This is great. You know, and this is wonderful. So we had this, I guess that was probably a Baja moment at that time, even though I, I watched the hit for a victory, but actually seeing and talking to people. And also Trey York out of a, a Woodward, Oklahoma. He is a, vet, a veteran and he had been blown up in, in the Navy and he's a Navy SEAL, but he just had, a, he showed me a video of himself and you just can't believe that this guy in this wheelchair just barely could move and, and barely, and he, but they helped him stand up and he just, wanted to serve his country even more. He said, I want to serve. And he couldn't even hardly salute. And he said, I want to serve my country. You know, still, he still wanted to serve us that, but he could not. And they medically retired him. And to see Trey today up and 
what I've been doing cannabis and he has several cannabis stores and several uh, hemp uh, tennis stores and 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 you see this guy he's like man he's like he's going all the time and he even told me he said after that I took my stuff off and it was the worst he had ever done and his product that he was giving him through the navy was over two thousand dollars a month of meds that he, they gave him every month of just opium everything on it he was on that and to see trey today he was just an awesome guy just slender and, and and very much energetic and you know it's working it still slows him down some and he said rich after this and he showed me the video and i'm like man is that you and he said yeah and, and I'm like, I, that's just, you can't believe what the CBD and the hemp and the cannabis had done for someone like that. And, and it was just so amazing to me that just touched my heart so much that here's a veteran that wanted to serve a country, but couldn't anymore medically, but now his own cannabis was able to take himself off, off all those medicines and still has a little bit of trouble with, with things, but, but able to run a business and able to have, you know, his wife and have, have two kids and, and do the things that they're doing in the cannabis industry and also the hemp industry. It's just been amazing to see that. And when you hear stories like that, it just touches your heart. It's like, this is this is a product that needs to be done. So where we focused on growing was because of the money and because of invoices and for people to do was on the CBD or the flower side. And uh, I realized that there's so much in the textile and still each day was working with farmers and farmers like, yeah, I've got all this land. We got 50,000 or 100,000 acres here in Oklahoma. We could grow hemp uh, fiber, uh, industrial fiber or hemp. And we've got a lot of land that we could grow here in Oklahoma. And and all the farmers, so I went to them because I was thinking, okay, if we get these contracts, I want to be make sure. And so I've got letters of intent for them. They said, we'll grow it. We want to grow it. We, we, we would love to have this product to do it. So we kind of just, uh, you know, and the textile and the hemp fiber is not there yet. So I realized that I think this year that we're going to be there, that a lot more people are asking for the, the fiber cotton, the things like uh, Wrangler and Levi said that they're going to go back to putting hemp in their, in their material, uh, you know, BMW in their cars. Ford said that they would do it and several. And then you look at several countries that, that say we want to ban, and this year in 2021, I think Canada is banning any single use of plastic. Um, and so the opportunity to have the hemp-based or plant-based plastic is a, a great opportunity. And, and my good buddy, Rye Russell is helping with that a lot. He's, Rye has done a super job of, of doing not plastic and, and, and trying to help with this. So I, I, I started building this relationship and. And with doing this, so I just wanted to know. So I call people. I'm like, "Hey, how about hemp? Do you grow hemp? How do you grow? What do you do? What do you what do you focus on? How do you do this?" And and so this one gentleman said, "Look, here's a list of all the people in Kentucky and and North Carolina and all these people. That, that's the whole list of everybody that's grown hemp or has grown hemp or processing hemp." And I'm like, "Hi, my name's Richard. I just like to meet with you. And I just like to visit with you." And and did it in the off season, which were the one in planting. I knew they'd already harvested. So we were able to build a network of, of people now I could call all over. So from even Wisconsin, Tom up there from, you know, I have uh, allowance to uh, uh, maybe even Florida to Hank that's doing a, a, a chromatography um, processing to, you know, all these different ones, Tom Young up in Massachusetts and Vermont that his company and uh, Oregon, uh, uh, David Howard and some of those that, so all these organizations are just, in this networking now that, and again, the Global Hemp Association for Shoot You and Benny and Jeremy at, at, at Global Hemp uh, Solutions. Mm -hmm. So the things that all these people, the knowledge and, and you're finding people now that are wanting to help the farmer. And that's where I, everything I did, I wanted to help the farmer and make sure the farmer was paid and make sure the farmer had a contract to grow it. And so it made it hard because a lot of people were coming in as brokers or they were coming in and trying to sell some magic seed that was nothing <laughs> full of males and a lot of things. A lot of farmers got burned. And uh, I said, no matter what, I wanted to focus on the farmer that the farmer would make sure he got paid for a crop that he done. So we, we kind of focused on that. I guess instead of just going out and doing more and getting contracts, I focus on more on the inside of getting all the legwork then of getting the network and making sure we'd have somebody to process it, making sure we'd have the farmers taken care of. And, and there's plenty of contracts that come across and they didn't come through because again, they didn't come up with the money or they they changed some things in the contract where the farmer wouldn't get paid. And we we decided not to go with that contract and kind of where we started. 
Yeah, I love it. So where are you headed? Where? Tell me where you're at right now. Where, right. where are you? We're probably um, looking at Oklahoma as uh, trying to be one of the central hubs. We're right in the middle of the states where I-40 runs right through it, east and west. I-35 runs north and south right through us. And we're looking at, because we grew hemp uh, back in the 40s and we know we could grow. We've grown here as far as CBD. Some of the things that we had to conquer through was mainly the seeds, uh, but we can grow in Oklahoma. We know we can. So right now we're in a process of, of a, a building that we have um, that's, we're working on a contract now, 800,000 square foot on 60 acres that will put this hemp processing in and be able to process the hemp fiber for textile or do and, and some of the different machines out there. It takes a while to get the machines built for us, but we're working diligently to get our building in order uh, trying to get with us now to get the things that we need in order. We're also working, um, talk to the farmers and farmers are ready to grow. Uh, and again, it's just trying to find that textile person that would want to help pay for this as we go and build it. So there's there's opportunity and I've visited with Bob Moore yesterday and Bob Moore Financial and uh, very much uh, you know into the hemp business now. He said, I didn't know anything in 2019 about hemp. And now I want to do this and he's financing things and doing it. So I visited with Bob uh, very deep yesterday and he said, Donald, oh, there's, uh, he's just full of knowledge and full of things that he's like, well, we could get the, you could get this grant and you could get this money and you could do this. And, and, you know, he's just full of information about the financial side of it and, and to help and get it going. And he said, I've put out processing plants in Oregon and Colorado and in California and different places. He said, I want one in Oklahoma. I said, well, we both live in Oklahoma. Let's do this. So I think we're going to work closely with Bob and see if we can't get this uh, processing in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, we do have the farmers here. Uh, one thing as an investor uh, for Oklahoma, they have, um, they want to be a top 10 state in the 50 states. So they really want investors to come to Oklahoma or even bring economic development to Oklahoma. So part of it is that the state has put together a program that they'll pay a 60% tax credit up to a 60% tax credit of your first year of all the investment that they put in the first year. So counting the machines, um, you know, land, whatever the deal, the total investment that get 60% tax credit back at, at, from the state. And then also for five years, they would pay up to 5% of the, the payroll tax uh, for 5% of the tax credit for payroll tax. So there's, there's a thing that they want to do. And so there's, there's not only that in the federal side, we have federal opportunity zones, um, green energy zones that we would do. And there's, there's a lot of uh, grants money available for that. There's also money for tribal. And we've been working a lot with some tribal uh, natives and a lot of tribal land that they're wanting to grow some of this hemp and, and do the things. Also, they said, we have the land, we'll put it into manufacturing. If you would you would build it for us on the manufacturing. So we're really done a lot of legwork and we're still got a lot of legwork to do. Um, I, I, I probably foresee by 2022 that we'll, we'll really be doing a lot. But in 2021, we're, we're as anything, we just have to get started and, and we're just ready to start and get it rolling. So what do you need? What's this? What do we need to do to bridge the gap to really get things Probably. going? Where's the bottleneck? I, I think a little bit again, main, mainly the contracts that you know for the farmers, and it's not about me. And I'm just this little piece of the puzzle. Everybody else has the big picture, and they they they're putting their pieces together. And I want to just be this little piece that helps connect the dots and put people together and help the farmers mainly because there's so many times um, the farmer on the total man gets doesn't get paid for nothing uh, and they raise all the crops and they do everything and they're the ones struggling and they're uh, in, in 2019 was the worst year ever of the farmers filing bankruptcy and and losing it. Now you have all these big farms that the grandpa and the, the, the son, which is in the older 60s and 70s now are still running the farm and the younger generation really don't wanna run it. But if we give them a crop that would pay them something that is that they're, they're like, oh, it's a new crop or something. We also, small farms, you know, five to 10 acres would help. Um, I think there's a great opportunity in the regenerative farming, uh, get back into what this soil needs to be and get the soil back and the hemp helps improve the soil. Uh, and also things like uh, hempcrete uh, for using the houses. We, one hempcrete is like planting 30,000 trees. And so the whole realm of hemp 
still bases on it has to be grown by the farmer. So the, the main thing would be for the farmer to be paid to grow this property. Okay, so I've got a question. When you talk about tribes, we have a lot of conversations about the impact of hemp being used for housing, for mm -hmm. their, their housing and creating a sustainable solution or a long-term solution. Um, I lived on tribal grounds for a little while, and I'll tell you, the homes that a lot of them live in are not, they just don't last, right? They're just not, they're not the quality that we need. And so that's the part that's the most appealing to me is that they have something that's more sustainable. We talk volume of housing that is needed and the amount of acreage that would be needed to fulfill something like that. What are we up against? What is what, what? One in you know, it was a political before is why they took it away. So why they took the hemp away is because all the people that owned the, the tree forest and the forestry was the people that was the newspaper and they wanted to print on wood and, and because they owned the forestry to try to make money. So hemp back in the day was printed, uh, a lot of things was printed on paper and the hemp paper and the, the, the wood that it would make, the hemp creek that it would do. Uh, Mike McGuire out of Oklahoma, he's actually got two, two or three patents on hemp uh, fiber and hemp creek that he would he's done he's done study for over 12 years on hemp uh, at how it work inside the house or on the house but there's a lot of out there right now in Europe a lot of places are building hemp creek houses um, yeah. I just got word this week that at 10 acres just north of me 10 10 miles from me that they're on 10 acres they're going to build hemp creek houses uh, this year so it's a um, I think that a lot more opportunity for us to grow it in America and grow the product because the shipping of the container shippers or the, the, the herd that we'd need, which is the middle of the stock, the herd for the hemp creek. And a lot of times the processing of that, because when you got herd, a lot of the processors or the decoordinators would just make it into herd and then separate it. They wouldn't separate the dust out of it. So when you'd add the lime to it, you would still get the uh, a base, but it would not be a, a big fluffy, um, really easy to use it would stick a lot and it would have have a little problems so i've seen some of the some of the machines out there that you know Vinny and jeremy and some of their machines that they're putting out are just you know phenomenal and 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 because they'll vacuum out and it cleans it up and it works just for and it a little bit automated and uh, the old systems that they had back in the 30s and 40s were you know old systems but they still worked and they made things out of hemp and but on the housing side i think if we grow it more in oklahoma by by next year a lot more people will be open to the hemp creek houses one is the green energy that we're doing one hemp house again is like planting thirty thousand tree on the carbon effect really great that way say that again one hemp house is like planting thirty thousand trees on the carbon effect Yes, it breathes constantly. So uh, where it would breathe, uh, regular material would breathe in or uh, will get moisture in, it can't get it out. Where a hemp house could breathe in and even that moisture's in there, it will finally release the moisture out. So also they've done studies of, of testing it with torch. So now they could claim that the hemp crete is actually um, non compatible right? I mean, there's plenty of videos, and there's a member of ours who has done this, like a nine-hour torch test, and you can touch it. <laughs> and it is, and, and it's just amazing to think about that this is a plant that in 60 to 90 days that we could get this plant up and ready instead of waiting 30 days or 30 years for a tree, that we kill a tree. Um, and again, the, the amazing amount and Robert Zener out of Canada and some of the studies that he's done and he posted today on LinkedIn about the difference of what 1 million acres would do and, and the volume that would be and how much it'd take to produce and what kind of volume that would produce uh, for people, just not only for the hemp creek, but for the fiber side and the pellet side and pelletization. Uh, the automobiles uh, industry, they're looking for the hemp creek, the hemp um, herd itself, but the palmer in it and the pelletize, but they want it to a certain level already. So they don't want to change a lot of things to, uh, so the average person say, oh yeah, I've got all this hemp now and I got this fiber. Hey, car dealership, do you want this? 
it doesn't work that way. It's still got to be to a spec that they want so they could put it into their machines that they already have. So I think with things like Bobby's machine, uh, uh, things like um, Benny and, and Jeremy, again, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that these people are already looking into it, that they're working on things, that their machines would help us get to that point where the, the, the car industry would help start putting these in a lot more. Uh, BMW wanted to put them in. There's, there's just so many things. It provides a consistent material for them at volume, right? My my understanding is that's really where our, our industry is bottlenecked is we've we've now understand what we can use it for on a small scale, but to produce volume, I mean, just the number of facilities. When you were naming how many facilities there are, and we, I've heard from plenty of people, we need you know, a processing facility at, at least within 100 to 200 miles of where the crop is being grown. Right? It needs to, in an average of 75 miles would be great. 100 miles would be great. And the opportunity is coming. But again, what happened with, you know, the government restricting it, everybody said that the hemp or the cannabis plant was a bad. Uh, so we're coming back from where we were back in the 20s and 30s of farms where we have grown this and, and it made rope and made paper and did the things out of that to come back now that we're, we're having to start over. But now we have the technology and we have the machinery that we could put together. So where they would maybe be able to process 10 acres, we could do a thousand acres now. So there's, there's a lot more opportunity, I believe, for us now as the growing, but then again, the farmer comes down to where we have to have the contracts for the farmer to be paid. And, and the farmer is the most important part of this. We got to got to have farmers and we got to get back into regenerative farming. There's just so much chemical has been sprayed out in the yards and in, into the fields so much that the nutrition is not there even in the soil and the hemp will help replenish some of the soil. But the nutrition wise, we need to get back where we're not killing every micro uh, living the organism inside the soil and we need to get it back to the way it used to be. And that's something I'm going to focus on myself as the regeneration of the farming and, and looking to get a farm this year even to do that with. We, we're very much in this puzzle that I was talking about and I'll talk a little bit about this puzzle is there's other things involved besides just hemp. So the green energy, um, I'm working directly with uh, James at Catalyst Inc., to uh, come in and put hydrogen treatment centers, but the hydrogen treatment center, water treatment center will actually take smog out of the air. Uh, it'll take non-potable water and re-clean uh, it and make it a potable water, make it a drinkable water even, um, and, and taken away from the carbon footprint. Right. So if we start again, thinking about the smog and the carbon imprint that we're doing, we don't want to add to that carbon. We want to reduce that carbon. And that's something also that we're looking at very closely is the things that we could do would be green energy. Also like Bob uh, Moore, some of the things that he has is the SIPS program is, is that, you know, it's green energy, even though it's still using wood, there's, but I think we could go back and, and replace that wood with, with hemp board. And it is. And, being replaced. It is. Sorry, I've yeah. got a, I've got a, I was on a call the other day with a gentleman um, who is, he's under contract right now. He's like, I don't want to be on your show. I don't want to be out and open right now, but I am under contract right now for something like 2,500 SIP boards. Um, That's great. Which is awesome. I didn't even know. What's been the most fascinating to me, and I don't know what your opinion is, is hemp has opened up passions or interests of mine that I didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. That... You know, I became very passionate about, about um, like uh, the textile industry because of the human trafficking stuff and human mm -hmm. rights, right? That's what hit me and hemp is what exposed that for me is right. our supply chain is so broken because of so many of the same tied, tied, yeah, anyway. It's, it is, and it's an amazing plant. There's a lot of things that probably we all should open our eyes and see what's happening you know not only as you said in a human trafficking but but in the whole industry as as basically loving your neighbor and helping the farmer and helping each other and i think about you know back in the old days when you know grandpa or grandma they had a problem with their farmer and the animal happened to die you know somebody else would come in and bring them the pig or they would help build a barn or they would right. you know put it on 
together and they grow all the vegetables together. I know my wife, she'd talk about her grandpa would farm all the time and he would, he would go to church and he'd just open up his trunk and it'd just be tomatoes and potatoes and, and, you know, cucumbers. And it would share with the church all the time. And, and again, I think sometimes we have to look at ourselves as humans that there's so much out there and there's so much in this industry that we can do, but we always need to think about the other person or the other farmer or one we could help build this back up to, to make it again, a, a, a country using hemp and, and other countries never stopped. So they're ahead of us in the, the, the knowledge and, and the things are there, but I think we're also ahead by having the more opportunity in land, more opportunity in farmers and more opportunity in the people that would be open to grow and, and a lot of people right now are thinking about and, and uh, maybe getting into farm but some of the young people to them 160 300 800 acres to farm it's just like oh yeah my grandpa did that he's always on the tractor and always in that that may be not something to do but if we could teach them on the other side of that where is a aquaponic system so on a quarter acre of aquaponic system you could grow um, 7,000 vegetables, leaf lettuce in one week. You could grow tomatoes, cucumbers, all this stuff on a quarter acre. Two people could run it, spend maybe 25 to 30 hours a week on it and have this more nutritious, a great value of product that we could share, even if you sold it. So an average leaf lettuce sells for $3, uh, organic leaf lettuce, $3, $3.50. Uh, if you sell that 7,000, even at $2, that's a lot of money, you know, just to generate as a farm. Uh, so there's all these restaurants are going into organic farming again. So not only the hemp, but you think of the whole picture again, as I was talking about that puzzle. So the, the green energy, the, 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 regenerative farming to putting the hemp in the new fibers that we can produce with hemp and, and it's five times better than cotton not that cotton's bad it was just that's what they use a lot of pesticides and a lot of things on cotton uh, but having something that uh, for the housing having something for you know different things even with talking about claire uh, claire clunk and, and the, the things that she's wanting to do with a, a, a hemp tampons and that, you know it's just amazing that this thing could do and she's already there she's got this this program and and so again all these pieces of puzzles i'm just this little piece of puzzle and i fit in i see this big picture of hemp and this nation and what we could do and it just gets me so excited to think about this is great opportunity that god bestowed on us a long time ago that we could have this plant that would do so many things i 100 percent agree with you it and somebody one time said um this industry brings passion out in people, right? And it's obvious when we talk about it, it's, a, it's not all about the money. And for the first time, sustainability and profitability are right in line with each other. We can create sustainability and uh, an eco-friendly product, 50,000 of them, and <laughs> yeah, and still be profitable and create revenue for people as well, right? What countries globally do you see really taking the lead? I've, I've seen a lot of them. Um, again, even Poland and, and uh, Europe, uh, different places that they've done a lot of things, but not only in, in just the growing of the hemp, but defining the CBD or defining the tincture or putting it in the food again. And our USDA right now won't allow us to put it in uh, cows or or that but there is some people that I know that in their own cows they gave it to them because they didn't sell them they raised their own cow and they gave them CBD or they gave them hemp um, and their protein was a lot better they had a healthier cow um, they really did a lot better and their meat tasted a lot better and it was, it was a really great product that's a deal he also raises a deer uh, white-tailed deer and he fed it to his deer as a you know he has a big 200 acre uh, and he fed this pellets to his deer to see if it would uh, do and all of a sudden you know their horn growth and their deal so his three-year-old uh, bucks are like 300 points and it's a big buck so in a hunting industry that's a big buck yeah. uh, so you know there's there's things that the hemp but also now I've seen studies that even in the horses which the horses, they're allowed because it's not sellable meat that you're not selling, but it'll help for, for things, cat litter, the things that we take advantage of every day that costs 30 years of trees to do that we have a 
a plant within 90 days, we could have that same product. So again, I think it's a little bit of a mindset, but when you talk to people and you see now like your movement of, of Global Hemp Association, you see all these different associations that are, are about hemp and about growing cannabis and this thing that we're doing. Now, a lot more people are like, oh, <laughs> I'm not afraid to talk about it now. It's okay to talk about hemp. It's okay to talk about cannabis. It's okay to, because it is a plant that is, uh, has been restricted for so long and we've been believed that it was such a bad plant. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm one of those that, that uh, were, were taught, oh, absolutely, no marijuana and that, you know, nothing like that. And, and uh, so you had that belief. And, and again, I think there's a lot of medicinal properties and just like anything, it can be abused. Uh, and I'm not saying it can't. There is some people that could abuse it and could affect them in different ways. But I th think that the, the medicinal the things for the textile, the things that we could do with this plant is just amazing. And, and again, I'm, I'm thankful that we have something and have groups like yourself that are starting to put this out more where people are. And it's just about education. Um, again, for years and years and years, 60, 70 years, we've been told that it's a bad plant and there's nothing about it. But now we have a younger generation that's like, hey, this is great. This is awesome. Let's, uh, let's build with this. And Madison, uh, that was on your uh, podcast, is building fiber and yarn and the things that's doing that. I was like, wow, this is just, you know, when you see these podcasts and you see the things that people are doing with hemp, and you're like, man, wouldn't grandma and grandpa be proud of this that years ago they did rope or they did just a few things like cotton material out of it or fiber cotton out of it and that's it. But now look at all these other 2,500 different things that they know that hemp will do and they could make out of it and the medicinal properties. And I'm sure probably, you know, if we look back and see, you know, uh, where grandma would say, here, rub this on there or do this or, or pinch some of this and put, put her own ointment together. It's probably something out of hemp, you know, and something to have to do with a tea tree or, or hemp or something anyway. So there's so many things that probably years ago we used and probably didn't know it was hemp, but now we have the opportunity to really understand and see what hemp can do for America. I challenge people to walk through the stores, even in the food aisles, the, um, you know, a lot of the gourmet or the unique um, or substitute flowers, like coconut flour and avocado flour and all these different flowers. There's a lot of hemp on our shelves now. I mean, it, it's coming and it's everywhere. And it's so exciting. I walked, I walked through an aisle the other day, like, like the uh, paper and plastics. And I turned around and next to me was a stack of um, plastic silverware. And it said nowhere on the, the label did it say the word hemp or cannabis or anything, but it said biomass and it had a hemp flower. And oh. I was like, this is plastic, like this is hemp plastic. <laughs> like, I immediately was like, this is, I mean, but just to show you how discreet they've had to be to get it onto the shelf. Um, yeah, it was interesting. We, we use it in our shakes every morning. So we, we make a green shake and, yeah. and uh, put hemp seed in it. And, and, you know, you could tell the difference in your system, in your body, that your body is actually feeling better and do better. Um, we were probably one of those that were like, okay, let's go into the natural. Let's go into uh, the natural soaps, the natural things years ago. And people were kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, you're one of those kind of people. And then we had the opportunity where some people say, and refer your friends and do that kind of stuff. We were that person probably. But, you know, again, it was just something that we believed in that starting with natural and trying to cut out. And um, when you walk down the soap aisle, and you smell that and you're like, oh yeah, it smells so clean. Everybody's so used to that as a clean smell. It's not, it's an outgas. It's a chemical that's an outgas. But when you, you know, people will say, oh, well, this is too natural. It doesn't have that Lysol smell or it doesn't have that, you know, tied smell. You're like, yes, because it doesn't have that chemical in it. You know? <laughs> but, you know, again, some of the things of, of, that we've noticed in this kind of product that would be that uh, the, the chemical would help you hold it in or hold things in or, or as far as the smell. So a, a non-chemical or a, a plant-based product would be more uh, able to um, uh, absorb or, or get more sour a little quicker or something. But you have to know that. So, okay, you know, this won't last as long on a towel or reuse it you have to wash it again or something but there's so many things that 
when you start taking your chemicals out of your life, you start realizing pretty quickly that, you know, when you use a natural material in your house and you do it and all of a sudden you walk in into a restaurant and you get a water and there's chlorine in it, you're just like, oh my goodness, this is so much. And, and the same aspect with as all the products that we use because that's what we're taught and that's what we do is we, we go and cut down a tree and will it down to a toothpick or we take a tree and uh, whittle it down and put it in a tube before. Uh, it took 30 years to grow. But now we can have a plant that's in 90 days. We have this same thing that produce enough that we can plant, produce all these different things, but not only the fiber side, uh, the hemp uh, creep side, the different things of the material. And I think it's just a mindset that once the training, once everybody's out and starts really uh, getting out there a little bit more and us as Americans standing up and saying, hey, we're going to be for the farmer. We're going to let the farmer grow this kind of stuff again, and we're going to support the local farmer. And if we don't start doing that, uh, even our local co-op, there's a lot of farmers out there that, you know, that's how they make their living and, and small businesses. And so one of the things I'm working with with James in Oklahoma, one, one of the states that will start with this is the small businesses. So we'll, he'll come in with the hydrogen plant, but we also have funds available now to us that will come into some of the states and will refinance or rebuild some of the small businesses to help the small businesses out to get them established again, where maybe the big box store had moved them out before. But if we help them get going, and, and we as Americans, I think we have to look back again and start again where we started before and uh, start with small business, help one another, help help each other to and, and, and networking like this and say, hey, do you know Johnny? You know, do you know Sam? Do you know Mandy? She has this hemp. She has this product. We need to do this kind of thing to refer and get it back to people looking at other people in America and to the big, big box things again. And that's probably my, my pet peeve. <laughs> and I agree. Well, I absolutely agree that our focus needs to be in this abundance mindset and away from the scarcity mindset and be willing to, to talk and build, like you said, make connections help each other and farm we we won't have it if our farms aren't taken care of i want to put a processing plant where like a co-op um mm -hmm. process where our our small farms camp i mean where they just they're not gonna they're not gonna build one right and in order for them to grow and have an opportunity to survive and get off of government assistance we've got to get them a crop that is right, the same, right? and so yeah mm -hmm. Hemp, hemp is a crop. So not only that, but all the different studies that they've coming out with it is the things that they can put in food and already the hemp seed where you put it in your food and different things. The, the knowledge, uh, the people of knowing that this is a product that's good for you anymore instead of, oh, that's a bad thing, that it, it's more and more it's going to come out. And interviews like this would help people understand and know. And again, about the farmer, starting with the farmer, but but again, the sustainability, the, the profitability that can be and the things that, again, I, I just look at Madison and how she says she started and then all of a sudden now she's just making this, she's got all this uh, hemp wool stuff that she's doing. I, I, wow, I mean, already that's amazing to think about this year that somebody is like that and Rye with what he's doing with the plastic, not plastic and uh, just all these different things that, to me, I think now that it's more important for us to leave a legacy back for our kids and our grandkids. And uh, I was visiting with my wife even yesterday and said, look, we need to get back to farming, to be back where the kids come to the farm and they learn and they understand about this is where the milk comes from. This is a cow. This is how we feed it. This is the farmer part of it. And maybe even, you know, the schools don't even uh, FFA as much as what they used to. A lot of future farmers in America, you know, started in school and their dad and their grandpa and everybody grow, but it's gotten where it's too much things of internet and too much things of uh, that we need to get back into growing of, of things that are important for us that could help us. And I think the hemp product is something we could do that with. Well, I have to give a shout out to the FFA group out of Ohio. They reached out and want to integrate hemp into their program. I would love Great. to invite you to participate in that conversation if you're interested. I'd love to 
I just want to provide, I've said for a long time that we give this plant to our kids and our kids will change the world with it. Great. That's a, get it into I, our kids. Charles, I have Tim Childs up in Ohio. He's doing real well up there in, in the hemp industry. And so that would be a, a great opportunity. I'll reach out to him and see if there's something yeah. he could do with that and help with that. Um, there, there's just so many in this puzzle. Again, there's so many pieces. And if you look at the box and it's all thrown together, and you're like, ah, oh, man, how am I going to put all these pieces together? And it's not about us. It's, it's really what God instills to us to put with others, to help others. And, and so when you start putting that, even you get the border of this picture um, and you see this picture start forming up and then one more piece of puzzle comes in, you see another piece of puzzle and then pretty soon you start seeing this bright, bright picture and, and behind me, you know, is a, a flowers of what my daughter had painted years ago. But, but you start seeing this picture come to life and you're like, wow, I can start seeing these flowers. I could see the yellow and I see the orange and see everything in this. That's what we are as a hemp organization that we could start growing this network even more and being probably more educational than, than before we have, because the last few years, a lot of states have still not even accepted it, even though the 19, uh, the 2018 farm bill passed, still a lot of states haven't accept, accepted it, but it's coming, it's growing. And uh, I think of it as one planet at a time, we can make a difference and we can change this world. Absolutely. Okay, I have one more question and then we can, we'll sign off. But I live in Utah where there's a big stigma around the religion tied to the plant. Being somebody that's active in your religion and in Christ, where did you have that stigma? What was that like and how did you overcome it? Well, I'll just tell you as one that was a deacon of the church, it was very private for me at first to start with this because I didn't want to offend anyone yeah. and, and being that it was something that they say illegal and I've even had some that even told me hey why are you walking so close to the line I said well it's not illegal is I'm not doing anything wrong this could help a lot of people I just do things so I did have that as myself personally so and I can't speak for others just talking about myself mm -hmm. but it, and I believe it falls on education. So where I would say, would you please just take the time to review and study maybe some of these, old, just even some of the YouTube or even something about the plant. So you understand the plant and not understand and try to automatically point fingers at me. And I'm sure, you know, still yet today, maybe people haven't said it, but I'm sure there's like, oh, there's that guy, you know, he did that again, you know, uh, that's not me, a very Christian life. But, you know, it's, I think, again, it's what in your heart and it's, it's, it's always between you and God. And if you feel comfortable that God has put this plant on this planet for a reason, that it has medicinal purposes. And there's many things like alcohol that was here. A lot of people abuse that. Uh, opium, you know, the, even the, the pharmacists, they know it's bad for you, but they still, and the doctors still say, take this. Oh, well, take five of them, take 10 of them. Uh, uh, and, and for us, and, and I'm a tribal native also. So knowing that in Oklahoma, 20 people die a day of opium overdose when you have something that take them off in a natural effect we need to get to that point so it, to me again as a christian i have to say yes i have to do what we have to do if others have a problem with it they just need the education it's not that i'm a bad person and not trying to be a, a christian i'm trying to be a christian and even help others and do more with this so i think in that religion a lot of people even with the way that America is right now. Oh, you're a religious person. Don't, don't beat me up at Bible Belt. You don't, you don't tell me how to live and you're judging me kind of thing. So that's a lot of people where, uh, and the Bible is taken out of context a lot and a lot of things. And they'll take a scripture instead of reading the whole context. And I think for me, I've examined it and I feel good. Uh, my wife and I decided we're doing this and we're going to help and we're going to make this product a good product. And if other people can't, see past that and still see me as a person as the christian then that's that's them and send their heart so uh we'll just do what we have to feel we comfortable with yeah i i agree with you that it's it's a level of education that needs to happen and we need more of it and more um you know i put out on a mission a while back to normalize the conversation by starting the conversation you know sure. instead of it coming from just me i want to hear it from everybody else give you an <laughs> So I love that you shared what you did. I think that it's, you know, like I said, take time to, or like you said, take time to look at the videos and educate yourself and then make your opinion. It's not a, it's not going away though. 
and on the business level and opportunity side, um, right. dive in, right? Because if we're not thinking about it, you're behind the times. Really, it's time to get in and really lean into the opportunity. Right. Exactly. And and I appreciate so much your time. I appreciate what you're doing and your organization is doing and all those that we mentioned today. There's many, many more I didn't mention, but there's just so many in this big piece of puzzle that, again, each one of us could be that that little piece of puzzle and, and make this such a great product. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate you and appreciate your business and appreciate everything that all these others are doing to make Kemp change America again this, this year in for 2000. Sure. <laughs> well, we're here to support you however we can and um, do whatever you need. So don't hesitate to reach out and we'll continue to be in touch, Rich. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one.